Hey everyone, welcome back. And today I want to speak a little bit about the voice in your head. Before I get into that, I want to thank all of my sponsors and patrons on Patreon. They're the ones who allow me to continue making these videos and this content available to all of you. So big thanks to all of them. So the voice in your head, have you ever thought about it? Have you ever noticed that there's a voice in your head? In fact, right now it might even be commenting on what I'm saying. It might be saying something like, there's no voice in my head. Or, oh weird, there is a voice in my head. I just noticed it for the first time. Or, silly Doug, I've always known there's a voice in my head. Well, noticing the voice in your head is a good first start to being more spiritually aware. Most of us never actually really notice that there's a voice in our head. And I think in psychology, this voice is called self-speak. And human beings, their brains, we have a tendency to kind of speak to ourselves, talk to ourselves in our own head. And it's kind of a silly thing, really, if you think about it. Like, why do you need to talk to yourself? And are you talking to yourself? So have you ever considered that that voice in your head may not be your voice? And I know this might sound really far out to a lot of people. Like, what? Of course it's my voice. Of course that's me, right? A lot of people think that that's, that's you. You think that that's you. So, is it you? Why would you then say nasty things to yourself, right? Doesn't that voice sometimes criticize you? Or doesn't that voice sometimes tell you things that ends up being wrong or incorrect? Doesn't that voice sometimes say really mean or nasty things about other people? Is that how you think of yourself? Is that what you think that you are or what you think? So it's interesting to consider, is that voice really you? And if it's not you, what is it? Who is it? Another question to ask is, are you in control of that voice? Do you think you can control that voice? Do you think that you're the one deciding what it says and what it doesn't say? I think sometimes people, especially people in the new age who like to really get on board with like positive thinking and I'm not saying positive thinking is a bad idea but I think some people like to believe that like they can control the voice and as I've talked before we have influence in another talk right I talked about influencing our body that I I seem to control my hand right now but um, sometimes my hand doesn't do what I want it to do right sometimes I want to grab something and I grab the wrong thing instead. And some people with um, diseases lose control of their hands or their body. So it may seem like we have control of our body or that voice in our head. So for instance, if I say, think of a pink elephant, you can think of a pink elephant, right? It seems like you have control. If I say, in your head, say one, two, three, four. You can do that right now, right? One, two, three, four. So it seems like you have control, right? Okay, well now think only positive thoughts for the rest of your life. Are you gonna be able to do that? Well, if you can, you're pretty amazing. Most of us can't do that. Most of us will find that sooner or later the thoughts in our head will kind of take on a mind of their own or will come into a situation where a negative thought will simply arise. We will see a situation and our brain and our mind will interpret it negatively. And as much as we might like to think that, oh, no, 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 I need to think positively, we simply won't be able to catch it soon enough and a negative thought will come in. So I think it's pretty clear we're not really in control of that voice. So who is in control of that voice, right? Is it us? If we're not in control of it, then is it fair to say that that's us, that that's our voice? 
whose voice is that in our head? It's an interesting question to ask. So if this voice is not us, and again, I think we can determine that it isn't us, we don't really have control over it. Um, we, it's not always nice to us. It's not always nice to people that we love, right? Sometimes it says very nasty and hurtful things to people we love. And then when we calm down, if we're upset, right, we might think some very nasty things. Even if we don't say those things, we might think some just horrible things about other people or even about ourselves. And then later when we get in our right mind, we might look back and say, God, that's not, that's not true. I can't believe I thought that. So another question to ask is, do you defend the thoughts or that voice? When that voice gives you an idea, like, I'm not treated fairly at work, and then maybe you're talking to a coworker, you share that idea, and the coworker says, oh, no, no, I don't think that that's true. I think that it's the circumstances. That's why it seems like you're not being treated fairly. And then maybe you get upset, and you know, I'm not being treated fairly. Or there could be other examples. Um, for instance, maybe you believe a certain musical group are geniuses. You listen to some music and you're like, my gosh, they are just geniuses. And then you share that with a friend and they laugh and they say, Puh, they're the worst band ever. And you get upset, right? Because that thought popped in your head. So, if these thoughts and this voice is not our voice, do we really need to defend it? Do we need to get upset when someone questions it or when it's even proven wrong, which may very well happen? Um, we might find that that little voice tells us things and then later on we find out it's wrong. Or very often we might find out that it may not be completely wrong, but it's also not completely right. And that a opposite thought is just as true as the thought that the voice in our head was telling us. So, again, do you question this voice in your head? This is a very important um, thing to begin to consider. Spiritually speaking, you first need to be aware that there's this voice in your head. You need to notice that you're talking to yourself. Or, I don't e we don't even need to say you're talking to yourself. There is a voice talking to you in your head. Then, the next step, you might say, is beginning to realize that that voice may not have your best interest in mind. That voice may very often be wrong. It might be wrong more often than it's right. Notice that you don't have control over the voice. You can't make it think only positive thoughts. You can't control. You may be able to influence it. Again, I'm not saying that there's no influence or there's no relationship. I'm not saying that. But I'm certainly saying you can't completely control it, just like you can't completely uh, control your body, right? I can't put both my legs behind my head right now just because I decide I'm going to. I just can't. My body will not do that. Other people's bodies might. And so it's the same with our mind. If I decide I'm going to think only positive thoughts, some people might have more success with that. Some people might have less. But no one has complete control. And then, again, defending or getting upset because someone else questions the voice in our head. You know, we might articulate to someone else, hey, what do you think about this? Because the thought arise came to us, and so we speak it out, and someone says, bah, that's stupid. 
and we get upset. Um, these are very important things to realize um, as a spiritual seeker or someone trying to awaken spiritually. Just as we are not our body, we are also not our thoughts, and we are more specifically not that voice in our head. So the question we can ask is, what are we? And that's a very important question that we need to start asking, investigating from a spiritual perspective. Really, what are you? And if you are not your thoughts, then what exactly are you? And that's something we will explore maybe in another talk. It's really what all of this is about, what all spirituality about is about. It's ultimately, what are you really? And what is, the, what is your nature? Um, we have these experiences of a voice in our head. We have an experience of a body. We have an experience of a world. We have experience of other beings. But what are we really? That's the big question. All right, everyone. I want to thank you for tuning in and listening. Again, thank you so much to everyone who's contributed, who has uh, allowed me to continue doing this work and sharing with the community at large. Thank you so much. Have a great day and namaste.